Hi, I'm Professor Mohammed Omar, and today we're going to discuss Putnam 2019 number A3. So the problem states, let B0 through B2019 be real numbers with B2019 not zero. And let R1 through R2019 be the roots of this polynomial right here that has these Bi's as its coefficient, with B0 being the constant one, B1 being the linear one, etc., up to B2019 being the Z2019 one. All these roots here are under complex numbers. We're going to let mu be the average of the moduli of these roots, or in other words, the average of the distance of each of the roots from the origin. And the question is to minimize mu over all polynomials like this, where the coefficients are between 1 and 2019 and increase from B0 through B2019. What is all this information and what am I supposed to do with all of it? All right, so there are a lot of parts that play with this problem. Um, and one thing to notice is like this problem doesn't inherently rely on any divisibility property of the number 2019 at all. Um, so if you want to gain intuition about this, maybe we should reduce the degree of this polynomial to something much smaller and see what we can do in that situation and see if we can adapt that situation to deal with a polynomial of this degree. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, so we've altered the problem slightly and changed it from a problem involving a 2019 degree polynomial to a quadratic polynomial. And see what we can do here to gain insight on what to do in the 2019 case. Um, so we're going to minimize the average of the moduli of the roots over all polynomials that look like this where the coefficients satisfy this condition. So we notice they're, the, they're increasing like they were in the 2019 case, but I've replaced the 2019 upper bound by 2. Okay, so the first thing I want to notice is something about this expression here that we're trying to minimize. So this is the sum of the moduli of the roots, which is their arithmetic mean. And this is at least their geometric mean. This inequality is known as the geom arithmetic geometric mean inequality. It says that the arithmetic mean of numbers is at least the geometric mean. The geometric mean is the product of those numbers involved and then taking the nth root of those, that product where n is the number of numbers you're considering. Here we have two numbers, we're gonna take the square root of their product. And the arithmetic geometric mean inequality holds with equality if each of these parts here are equal. Okay, this thing here is the square root of the product the moduli of the product of R1 and R2. And we actually have a lower bound on this quantity right here. Um, so if we look at this expression for the polynomial we have, R1 and R2 are the solutions to the equation P of Z equals zero. 
we can rewrite such an expression by dividing this polynomial by B2. And so the roots are going to satisfy this equation here. Okay, but the roots, if we factor this polynomial, we'll have the roots as roots. So the product of the roots is the constant term, meaning the products of the roots is this expression right over here. Now we want to keep in mind what happens when we switch to the 2019 degree case. Um, there we'll get the negative of the product of the roots because we have an odd number of copies of linear factors here. Um, but nonetheless, the modulus of the resulting product is still going to be this number here because this thing is a positive number because B0 and B2 are both positive. So this expression here, and this will generalize, is B0, the square root of B0 over B2. Now B0 is at least one and B2 is at most two. So this thing is at least one over root two. Okay, so I'll eliminate this work that we did. We know from the work we did that this quantity here is at least one over root, the square root of one over two. So no matter what polynomial we pick in this family of polynomials, this expression here is at least one, the square root of one over two. So if we can find a polynomial where we have equality in each of these situations, then that polynomial will minimize this function because we know this is a lower bound for sure and that lower bound will be achieved. So we're looking for a polynomial where the modulus of R1 and the modulus of R2 are equal and their product is one half. So in other words, they're both one over the square root of two in modulus. Okay, um, so thinking about a polynomial that satisfies this and also satisfies all of these conditions here is a little bit difficult. So what we'll do is start with one polynomial where the moduli of its roots is one and then try to scale it somehow to get a polynomial of the kind that we like. Okay, so how do we get a quadratic polynomial whose roots have modulus one? Um, we can start off with this cubic polynomial, z cubed minus one, right? And observe any root of this satisfies r cubed is one, and so the modulus of r cubed is one, and so the modulus of r is itself one. If you're familiar with roots of unity, we're looking at roots of unity here. This thing factors into z minus one times z squared plus z plus one. All the roots of this, like we just argued, have modulus one. So if we look at this quadratic factor here, its roots have modulus one. I'm gonna write this down separately as one plus z plus z squared and call its roots omega one and omega two. Great. Okay, so here we have a polynomial, modulus of its roots is one. Question is, can we scale that, this thing somehow um, to get a quadratic polynomial whose roots have modulus one over root two, but also that satisfies this interesting condition that we want to be in our family of polynomials. Okay, so what I wanna observe is, let's say we scaled the variable involved by a factor z. Then the roots of this polynomial are gonna be the roots of these scaled down by c. If we plug any one of these in here, we'll get exactly the expression we have for it, w or omega one or omega two being a root of this polynomial. Okay, so if we want the moduli of all of these polynomials to be one over root two, we can do that by setting c to be the square root of two. Now what's interesting about that is if you look at the way this polynomial is constructed, 
The polynomial is 1 plus cz plus c squared z squared, right? c is strictly greater than 1. And so we have a polynomial here where 1 is the constant coefficient. And because c is greater than 1, the coefficients increase as we go up. And this last one is bounded above by 2. So this polynomial here actually is in the family of polynomials we want to consider. Its roots are two things that have modulus exactly 1 over root 2. And so they satisfy all of these inequalities with equality. Meaning that the average of the roots actually achieves this lower bound that we considered in the first place. So this is a polynomial that gives us that the lower bound is achieved, and so the minimum, mu, is the square root of 1 over 2. Great, so how would this generalize to the 2019 case? We'd have a very similar setup, where here we'd have the average of 2019 things, so here we'd have the 2019th root of the product of 2019 things, which is going to be at least the 2019th root of 1 over 2019. And using a similar analysis, making all of the moduli of the roots equal to this 2019th root of 1 over 2019, and constructing the same polynomial that we had here, but extended to 2000, a degree 2019 polynomial, we'll get exactly the same phenomenon that we had here. So it gives us a minimum of 2000, the 2019th root of 1 over 2019. Great. So what's the moral of the story with this problem? I think the moral is you start with a problem that seems extremely complicated, right? And you notice that it involves a polynomial that has a particular degree, but the problem's not affected by that degree particularly. You can reduce down to a polynomial of a much smaller degree and do your analysis down there to get an intuition for what to do um, with your general problem. This is a phenomenon that happens not only in something like the Putnam, but also a lot in research where you have some type of general phenomenon going on, restrict to smaller cases to get an intuition for what's happening, and then you can use that to build up an intuition for what's going on in the, in the larger case. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click the like button, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.